Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MapTube. In today's video, we start a new topic and that is our Laplace transform. Well, this Laplace transform was, let's say, found by a mathematician um, who's a French mathematician, Laplace, and that was in the 18th century. And later on, the subject was developed by many people and one of the biggest contributor was a self-taught electrical engineer and mathematician and physicist and that was Oliver Heaviside. Okay, so he contributed a lot of things in Laplace transform. But the widespread use of Laplace transform or let's say the exponential growth of this subject in the applied field started recently. Recently in the sense just after the Second World War. Because just after the Second World War, the demand of electrical and electronic goods started growing. So naturally, the engineers started um, modeling many things so that they can develop new things. And one of the best tools they found to model and analyze uh, their uh, functions was the Laplace transform. So what they used to do or what they still do um, is like they take a function which is based in the time domain. And then they will take the Laplace transform which we are planning to study now. and once they take the Laplace transform, it will change into the S domain. So look at this. The function is also changed and the domain also changed. And many of those engineers uh, love to analyze their functions at this point. They don't want to analyze the original function, but they want to analyze and manipulate this transformed function. And once their job is done, they will take the Laplace inverse and they go back to the original format. So that is exactly what we are planning to study in Laplace transform. How to take the Laplace transform and finally how to find the Laplace inverse. And at the end, uh, of this video series, we will be learning how to solve differential equations using Laplace transform. That is one of uh, the best applications because Laplace transform is a very good tool to solve um, boundary value differential equation problems. And one more thing, if you look at the derivative, look at this, let's say the derivative of sine t. The derivative of sine t is cos t. You have to notice one thing the domain didn't change. But in Laplace transform, not only the function, here the function changed, not only the function, but even the domain will change. Okay, so let's go to the topic. So the definition of Laplace transform goes like this. Let's say we have a function f of t. And when we define mathematical, we don't care whether t is time or anything else, where t is a positive quantity. So that our engineer friends can use t as time domain or whatever they desire. So mathematically, f of t is a function and t is supposed to be greater than 0. And the Laplace transform of f of t is defined to be a sum a continuous sum, yeah, integration, 0 to infinity. Uh, what we do is we multiply the function with e to the power minus st and add them up from 0 to infinity. And of course, we will get an answer in s. So I'll repeat once more. Consider a function f of t and the domain of the function is restricted to be positive. And to find the Laplace transform, all we have to do is multiply the given function with e to the power minus st and 
integrate from 0 to infinity. And remember, this the answer will be in terms of s. So, we always tend to write Laplace of f of t is equal to capital F of s. In the sense, once you take the Laplace of a function, we will get another function and it will be in terms of s. Uh, in this video, let us derive um, the Laplace of one or two basic functions. So, I am wondering what will be the Laplace transform of the function e to the power a t. Okay, I told you if you want to take the Laplace transform, it is very easy. You integrate from 0 to infinity and take the given function and multiply that by e to the power minus s t and integrate. Okay, so, this will be integral 0 to infinity e to the power what is a power m into a to the power n of course a to the power m plus n. So, this gives me minus s t plus a t d t and that will be integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus of s minus a into t d t. Now, look at this. This is an improper integral. In your first semester, you might have learned how to deal with improper integrals. We change the problem into a limit problem. Let us say limit y tends to infinity integral 0 to y e to the power minus of s minus a into t dt. So, do not forget whenever we have an improper interval this is improper interval type 1 because the limits are not finite. So, all we have to do is we have to push this into a limiting problem and integrate as usual. So, we get limit y tends to infinity integral e to the power a x is in to the power a x the whole divided by a plus c. So, when you integrate this part you get e to the power minus of s minus a into t the whole divided by minus of s minus a within the limits 0 to y and that will be limit y tends to infinity limit y tends to infinity e to the power minus of s minus a into y by minus of s minus a minus when you plug in e power 0 it becomes 1. So, 1 by s minus a. Now, just apply the limit and I am sure that you know e to the power minus infinity tends to 0. So, the first part will vanish and and this equal to limit y tends to infinity. We plug in the upper limit. So, we get e to the power minus of s minus a into y the whole divided by minus of s minus a minus we plug in 0. So, we get 1 by again minus of s minus a. The reason is e power 0 is equal to 1. Okay, now, that is it. We plug in 
y as infinity and I am sure you know that e power minus infinity tends to 0. The graph of the regular exponential function looks like this e to the power 0 is 1 and then it shoots to infinity and this side becomes asymptotic. So when it approaches minus infinity the distance between the x axis and the graph will be very small. So e power minus infinity tends to 0. So the first part will be gone and this minus and minus will become positive 1 by s minus e. So that will be our first standard result that is Laplace transform of e to the power a t is equal to 1 by s minus a. So I told you we start with the function of t and we end up with the function in s. Okay, this is a small video. I am going to stop the video now. In the next video, we will be deriving the Laplace transform of many standard functions and piecewise functions. So, till then, bye.